this webinar on the benefits of water-based barrier coatings uh, with a focus on sustainability and creating barrier performance and packaging. Uh, my name is Lee Andrews and I'll be your host today. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. We've got guests in this call from around the globe, a large contingent from China and India. We've got guests from Europe, Central South America, and a large contingent of guests uh, joining us from the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So I thank you all for joining us. Again, my name is Lee Andrews, and I'm the Vice President of the Paper Room Board Business Line in Actiga, North America. Joining me today is Benjamin Lux. Ben is our Chief Technology Officer uh, at Actiga, and Dr. Lisa Schonenberg, the Global Portfolio Manager for the Paper Room Board Business Line. Let me set the stage for our conversation by offering a couple of quick facts to build a foundation for who we are at Actiga and Altana so that uh, people can better understand our platform to deliver these types of solutions to the marketplace. Altana, our parent company, is a 2.2 billion euro a year company uh, based in Germany. The company invests approximately 8% of our annual revenue back into R&D and is highly focused on delivering sustainable solutions to the marketplace. The company's been built via acquisition with over 30 key acquisitions in the last 10 years. We're a talented group of 6,500 employees and we're broken out into four different divisions uh, that host and hold their own unique brands. Uh, the company has a unique corporate culture that embodies in our workforce an environment of trust, an environment of empowerment, uh, an environment where we are all led to desire to support our markets and satisfy our customers' requirements each and every day. Actiga, a division of Altana, uh, has a leading position for specialty coatings, inks, adhesives, and sealing compounds. We provide products that create high value visual appearances, special tactile touch um, uh, uh, attributes, and, a bit, and unique defined functionalities such as chemical resistance via barriers uh, and blister adhesion and adhesion of window type materials. We server, service the global markets of packaging, labels, printing, and the medical industry. Actiga is comprised of 11 separate companies that were brought together under the Actiga umbrella. But it's really more than the sum of just these 11 companies. We're a global network, and through that global network, we offer manufacturing sites in Europe and North and South America and China. Uh, we offer sales and developmental activities, innovation centers uh, in, in those markets. We also have regulatory specialists in those markets to have uh, a unique understanding of the local regulatory requirements for the products that are, are that for the uh, uh, packages our products go into, uh, and we have a global view of those regu that regulatory environment so we can support our customers that have a global footprint and a desire to sell things in packaging across the globe. Today, we've got a handful of learning objectives that we'd like to uh, explore uh, together. Um, the first thing we want to do is talk about sustainability and how sustainability is reshaping the world around us and specifically the industries that we're in. Certainly the packaging industry is under tremendous pressure from their customers and downstream from their uh, end users of those products. We wanna talk about plastics. We wanna talk about potential displaced packed plastics with aqueous based coatings. And we wanna talk about the impact of those plastics on the world around us. We wanna discuss the technical, commercial and regulatory requirements of water-based barrier coatings we want to discover not just some of Actiga's unique solutions, but we want to talk about the sustainability advantages of those solutions and how we're bringing those to market. Let me now introduce you to Ben Lux, our Chief Technology Officer. Thank you, Lee. And thank you to all the participants joining from all over the globe. Uh, as Lee said, we're gonna really start this conversation focusing on sustainability. And sustainability is something that I've been hearing about ever since I joined the industry. So for the last almost 15 years, it has been this emerging trend, this growing topic. 
And we've all been kind of waiting for that moment for it to hit. And the good news is it's no longer a trend. Uh, we have moved past that and we're into this new realm of sustainability where we see it truly as a fundamental requirement or expectation of the market. And uh, as developers, as uh, uh, industry uh, partners within the space, this is a major shift for us. And it's really important for us to understand uh, not just that we've arrived at this point, but also what kind of pushed this and what got us here. Uh, in the early days of sustainability, it was all about consumer preferences. And it very much still is being led by consumer preferences or being pulled by consumer preferences. But one of the big shifts that we've seen is that uh, it's not just the consumers now demanding it, right? It's brand owners. And it's brand owners not just to meet the needs of the consumers, but it's brand owners because they are seeing this uh, sustainability as a fundamental requirement for the long-term viability and profitability of their businesses. That sustainability uh, is no longer this kind of niche trend, but rather uh, something that these businesses have really bought into and are leading the charge now as brand owners in seeing sustainable products, particularly in packaging, uh, make it into the market. Uh, a great example of this is the new plastics economy. And this is a multinational project uh, where there's hundreds of different brand owners that have stepped up and voluntarily made some pretty bold commitments around sustainability. And they're doing this, uh, um, setting these aggressive goals. And in doing so, they're really pushing sustainability, uh, particularly around packaging. Um, up the supply chain and down towards consumers. Um, when we uh, look at the claims that these uh, brand owners are making, um, they are big, they're bold commitments and they're public commitments. These are coming from brand owners that aren't in the business of saying something publicly and doing something else. So we've already started to see this impact, uh, but when we look in more and more to these corporations and really what's changing. Uh, something that's interesting is that this is a commitment that's going beyond just packaging. Um, and it's really being incorporated into the DNA, into the daily focus of the largest companies in the world. Nestle, Apple, Walmart, Kellogg have all made these claims and they're not alone. These are some just some good examples. Um, and again, these claims are bigger than just packaging. It involves packaging and operations kind of this holistic view on what a sustainable future requires. If we zoom in on packaging sustainability amongst global brand owners, there has been this flurry of activity around various topics. But one of the biggest single topics that we've seen uh, is around replacing plastic packaging with more paper-based alternatives. Uh, and in particular, we see this in the barrier area. Um, likely the largest single trend that we see from our position uh, in the market has been this shift to more sustainable barrier type solutions. Um, I call these replacements and not small niche niches or temporary solutions. These are true replacements because these brand owners are making these commitments to move away from the traditional approaches and move towards these sustainable uh, approaches permanently. It, the idea is uh, that this is no longer just a small subcategory, but something that with time will continue to grow and eventually really represent the bulk of the market. Um, before we talk about some more specific solutions, I think it's really important that we need to zoom out again and understand the status quo of what's going on in barrier in the industry today and uh, really what are the big challenges or why is making progress against some of these approaches uh, such a challenge and why they will require unique solutions. Um, polyboard or extrusion coated polyethylene paperboard um, is the most ubiqu ubiquitous material used in the barrier world today. 
and for good reason. It's low cost, has really well established supply chains, a really large functional performance window on the actual product properties, uh, established regulatory statuses, and it's really, really familiar. So uh, one of the biggest challenges with Polybor for all that it does so well uh, is it's not really paper, it's not really plastic, uh, so it's not really recyclable. So while you have something that meets a lot of these requirements of the industry that has a great cost uh, uh, profile today, um, it's kind of letting the industry down with one fundamental requirement around its end of life. And the result is a lot of these packaging materials aren't ending up in recycling facilities, but rather in landfills or in the ocean. And, and that cost, which is significant to our planet, is something that's not being borne by the supply chain today. Um, this is what we call the high cost of cheap plastics, where we have uh, this material that's out there, it's ubiquitous and moving away from it, um, it becomes more and more challenging. We've kind of exhausted the traditional approaches uh, and a traditional approach and making this material more sustainable would be things like down gauging or a subtle change to the formulation. And the problem with those are they're just kind of band-aids. They don't really address this fundamental end of life problem that is uh, really standing in the way of uh, these traditional materials. So in order to address these, we need to look at new approaches and different ways to uh, effectively address the performance requirements of the market and of the industry. Um, but these new approaches have major challenges. Uh, outside of sustainability, the largest driver of innovation that we see around the globe is the ever-changing and complicated regulatory landscape. Um, this is another challenge associated with barrier. Um, Polyboard has this really well-established regulatory profile. And that means that, again, it's easier to try to just put some Band-Aids on Polyboard to try to be able to um, make new products or make some progress on sustainability. Um, because any other change uh, that's going to be more fundamental or fit in that bucket of a new approach is ultimately going to require uh, having to deal with the complexity of this regulatory landscape. Um, to give an illustration of just kind of how complex this is, you can see just part of our regulatory framework uh, as it pertains to barrier products. Uh, when we look at barrier, particularly barrier products that are coming into contact with food, <clears throat> there is no global regulatory body. There's no single checkbox you need to make. It changes by region. Uh, it can even change by municipality in the States. So uh, the regulatory framework, uh, even when we boil it down and try to just get the critical aspects into it, is incredibly complex. As Lee mentioned earlier, we have a uh, network of global regulatory experts within Activa that deal with this every day. Um, but um, as a global supplier, this is a major challenge for all of us within the industry because the regulatory environment changes constantly. It's complex and um, just understanding it can be a major challenge. So to get a better understanding around regulatory and the complexity, I think it's important to better understand really what I mean by barrier, what we mean by barrier, functional barriers in general. Um, functional bar barrier solutions vary greatly depending on the end use or the intended use. But at the simplest level, functional barriers have two purposes protect the packaging and protect the product. Protecting the packaging comes in the form of things like protecting from environmental factors, uh, but also um, protecting the package itself from whatever the primary product is. If you're making a functional barrier for coffee cups, right? You need the package itself needs to be able to hold hot coffee, cold coffee, coffee with cream, coffee without cream, coffee with 
sweetener, with sugar, with whatever uh, Dunkin' Donuts is suggesting you should put in your coffee today. Um, and there's a lot of complexity just in that, right? So you need to protect the actual packaging from what it's holding and from the environment. That other aspect is we need to protect the product. And as a proxy, we need to protect the people that are consuming the product, right? Um, that means that we need to protect the product from environmental factors, but also from things that we might not always think about because they've kind of been invisible for a long time because of uh, how ubiquitous polyboard is. So things like migration of inks that are on the outside of the package, how could those potentially get into the food that is in the package? Or uh, even more fundamental, the substrate. As we use more and more recycled papers, there's more impurities that are in that substrate and we need to protect the primary product from those. So PE is really excelled, uh, Polyboard is really excelled because it has this wide performance window and this favorable regulatory status. Um, but again, um, what's really limiting it, why we need to be thinking of new approaches and ways to get away from Polyboard is uh, there's a fundamental problem with the end of life. And it's driving um, us to look at new solutions And this high cost for these cheap plastics is forcing brand owners and suppliers to develop new approaches and it's clear that these new approaches must meet new requirements. And this is really the challenge for all of us here on the call today. Uh, upstream, downstream, everybody in the industry needs to understand this and be aware that to really address these challenges, um, it's gonna take some different approaches. Yeah. Looking at it another way, um, when we think about developing solutions, we need to develop solutions that meet these aggressive sustainability targets, oftentimes changing, a wide array of diverse functional requirements. It's gonna change by every product, every environment, uh, et cetera. Um, the ever-changing and highly complex, uh, and sometimes even competing regulatory requirements. And this last little thing that we haven't even addressed yet, uh, called cost, which uh, obviously is gonna play a major factor in all of this. So. If this seems like a scary, daunting task to others, um, that's good be, because it is. We're, we're talking about making major change. And the good news with this um, is that at Actiga, this is something that we do every day. And we have a really excellent track record with this. One of our keys to success around this has been uh, developing new solutions and new approaches with partners um, using our developmental framework. And fundamental to this framework and our, our approach uh, is really understanding what we just talked about around sustainability, but also all these other aspects that are so important for a product to be successful. Um, the pillars that we really define in this framework for sustainability are environmental, economic, social, and oftentimes with social that'll include the human health, the regulatory aspects, as well as things like sourcing practices. Um, and last but not least, the fitness for use, the actual um, performance of the product. Um, we look at these as uh, really holistic product requirements. And what I mean by that is that we're not focusing on an average score between these four different pillars. We need to be able to succeed in each one of these because if we're not doing one of them, um, then we don't have a product, we don't have a solution. Uh, and I'm using we here as the whole industry, right? So um, collectively we could come up with the most environmentally friendly barrier coating in the world. Um, but if it costs $60 a pound, uh, that solution is gonna stay on a shelf and collect dust. And that's not gonna make the impact that we need on the industry. That's ultimately not gonna help big brands address their goals. Um, so this is really the big scary challenge for all of us as an industry. And as we address these challenges, and hopefully by now you've gotten a pretty good picture and appreciation for just how big and complex some of these challenges are, um, there are alternative solutions that can uh, uh, come into the market uh, today and things that we can continue to develop on to really address this. These new solutions that we're focusing on uh, would not be available or would not be practical 
if it wasn't for some macro changes that are happening in our market, in our industry today. Um, the changes that we are seeing today have really been key in making way for the new solutions of tomorrow. And that's why we love to see these big brand owners step in and make these commitments because it's really helping solidify what the future of our industry is going to look like. The major changes that we are seeing that are really leading to this future for sustainable products are as ubiquitous, if not more ubiquitous than the status quo of today. Um, some of them include things like big investments coming from a lot of the companies that are uh, dialed in today, but companies like Actiga as well to further develop uh, new technologies. It's not just technologies though, we're also seeing a lot of work going into developing new supply chains to help bring these technologies to life in an acceptable cost structure. Um, and again, that continued pressure from brand owners and consumers to address the full life cycle of products. Um, it's not just about that cost coming into the brand owner, but about the end of life and that holistic approach to the product. Um, so as we think about solutions and look at solutions, um, and as these solutions continue to mature, uh, the market's gonna continue to change and progress. And with these changing winds, uh, Actiga is really working across the entire supply chain with brand owners, with mills, with converters, raw material suppliers, regulatory agencies to bring a new model of barrier products to the world. Um, we do this in a really partner centric approach. And um, internally we can utilize our technology and our regulatory expertise, but it really takes that partner centric approach to co-build these holistic solutions for tomorrow. Um, so Lisa is gonna zoom in now a little bit more specifically and talk about how water-based coatings can present a more holistic solution to the current and future market needs and taking all of these challenges into account, the changes that have happened, the changes that are gonna to continue to happen. Um, this is important and probably the key takeaway message from my standpoint of what the future of barrier is gonna look like. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Lisa uh, to walk through some water-based barrier solutions. Yeah, thank you, Ben, for your introduction. So the sustainable solution that Actiga offers um, to the increasing amounts of PE, PET, and other environmentally harmful plastic laminates are water-based barrier coatings, because these um, meet largely real-life technical and regulatory requirements. In the following chapter, we would like to introduce Actiga's sustainable and high-performance water-based barrier coating solutions. Um, moreover, we will also discover their advantages over PE elimination, um, present valuable product features, and give you an insight into the wide range of applications. In October of last year, we launched our new global barrier product portfolio as a sustainable alternative Egg green barrier coatings include both water-based barrier coatings as well as aqueous TPE dispersions by uh, Unico technology that can be used as a coating or a binder system in the pulp. Um, these are two very different techno technological approaches that are not uh, comparable from a purely chemical point of view. But nevertheless, they can uh, serve similar markets. And here with Actiga globally offers sustainable product solutions uh, to paper manufacturers, as well uh, as paper or packaging converters and also printers. And we can therefore offer a suitable solution along the entire supply chain. Our um, product line, Act Green Barrier Coatings, um, stands for sustainable product solutions that contribute to environmental protection because these products replace PE layers, um, enable simplified production processes, and contribute to a sustainable recycling of the end product. And um, first of all, I would like to introduce you to our conventional water-based barrier coatings. As a minimum market requirement, water-based barrier coatings from Actiga build up a barrier against uh, hot and cold water, water vapor, and um, animal, vegetable, or synthetic oils and fats, as well as the selection of dairy products. Um, of course, each tailored uh, to the individual end use or packaging type. 
Besides these specific barriers, we also offer products with combined balance barrier properties to meet, meet market requirements as flexibly as possible. In addition to um, selected uh, resistances or barriers, um, our products also show resistance to alcohol, acids, or alkalis in different concentrations, and also for a variable period of time. This always depends on the filling good um, and the intended or expected lifetime of the packaging. Especially these resistances are technically very challenging, but also very important from a regulatory point of view, because they are defined as test simulants in migration studies. And in this area, we are therefore very keen to continuously improve our products. Um, barrier coatings are very sensitive and um, complex and highly specified products. So to ensure high quality and best barrier properties, we not only perform standard tests such as yeah, COP and kit measurements during development, consultation and customer support, we also develop and perform our very own specific and individual test methods tailored to the different um, end users and realistic requirements. And in this way, we respond to customer specifications or standardized test methods from brand owners. Um, regarding application conditions, our barrier coatings can be processed by sheet fed offset, flexo uh, or gravut printing, or by different um, coaters like roller, rod, curtain, blade, or air knife coater, for instance. Our products are available in different viscosities or can be easily diluted in order to be processed by the different printing technologies. And um, depending on the product, they are available to print packaging converters or printers or the paper industry. With regard to the presented barrier properties and application options, our egg green barrier coatings are an ideal solution for food and non-food packaging. So some examples are shown here. We are already uh, well ahead in the setup of a globally available barrier product portfolio. So in, um, in some applications, we have already been able to achieve a lot of success and established products in the market. For more technically and regulatory demanding end users, we're still working on a final product solution and are continuously improving existing products to meet market requirements. For example, we have had great success in the area of convenience and fast food packaging. Um, for example, burger clamshells, uh, french fry bowls, food trays, um, and yeah, takeaway boxes for prepared meals, salads or sandwiches, but also um, fruit and veggie trays. And these end users require either a very distinct oil and grease barrier or a strong water holdout. Also in the field of um, pet food packaging, where the barrier against very aggressive fats or simulants is important, uh, we can offer first alternative barrier solutions to PE. We can also serve the demand um, for barriers for bakery products, dry food like sugar or pasta, or even frozen food packaging. The barriers in these categories are very different and range from yeah, strong fat to water resistance or resistance to very specific substances like nucleol in case of sugar, for example. For hot and cold drinking cups, for, for soft drinks or coffee, but also ice cream tubs, um, Actiga late stage developments are available for better testing. For these applications, a balance barrier between fat and water is crucial, but resistance to acids and dairy products like different creamers is also essential. And um, in addition to that, for but are processing steps such as cup forming and heat sealing are key. Besides food packaging, um, Actiga also offers barrier solutions for non-food applications like soap packaging or tobacco inner liner. Especially the tobacco industry has very high regulatory requirements. Um, here we are working with high energy on the continuous improvement of already existing barrier coatings. The combination of different barrier coatings and, if possible, also variations in substrate and application opens up a wide range of possibilities for designing sustainable packaging with barrier effects. We work together in a global team of experts from different competence areas and economic regions for problem solving. 
So Eggrim barrier coatings are globally available to everyone who's interested in sustainable packaging. And with this approach, we want to offer global operating customers the greatest possible flexibility in product selection. Um, there's just one thing that is very important to all of us. Um, although many end users are shown here, um, barrier solutions are very complex and sensitive. So especially in the demanding area of drinking cups, there is no plug and play product solution. Barrier coatings are not standard products. Instead, uh, we work together with the customer to develop a very individual solution that is adapted to the specific needs and application and production conditions on site. So due to this high complexity, success is hardly possible without tailor-made solutions. Besides excellent barrier properties, our water-based barrier coatings offer further valuable product features, which is why they are ideal for the applications just mentioned. Um, as already stated in this webinar, a major drawback of PE and other plastics is their poor recyclability. The main driver for alternative barrier solutions is a significant increase in recycling capability. And we have got that covered with our egg green barrier coatings. Um, selected products undergo comprehensive recycling tests, um, as we have the possibility to verify the PTS recyclability in-house. This European standard is very much comparable to well-known methods in the United States. And in cooperation with the end customer, the recyclability of the final product can then be verified. And in addition, we also work in close cooperation with renowned institutes to investigate um, further testing for recyclability, as well as biodegradability or compostability. A variety of end applications also require sealing properties, uh, such as heat or ultrasonic uh, sealing, um, in addition to barrier coatings, which actually provide just these properties. We also offer heat seal coatings that can be used in combination to um, get the best possible result. Those products um, whose end use necessarily requires heat sealing, such as drinking cups, uh, are of course designed to meet these very specific requirements. Um, egg green barrier coatings are suitable for both the inside and outside of the packaging, and therefore meet all requirements for food law compliance in the respective economic area. Your safety is our first priority, and that's why you can rely on our responsible approach to standards, regulations, and legislation. Tegas barrier coatings from, form the basis for the production of legally compliant food packaging. Our global team of experts from um, regulatory R&D and analytical service work very closely together to meet their responsibilities and provide our customers with the highest level of safety and regulatory compliance. Also in our in-house analytics, raw materials and coating systems are toxicologically tested, examined for their light migration behavior and continuously monitored. We also work closely with external institutes as well um, as our customers to ensure that we meet both general standards and customer specific requirements in the best possible way. In addition, our barrier coatings also fulfill other technical requirements, such as high wet block, scuff, or heat resistance, because these um, are equally important to addition to barrier properties, especially with regard to further processing steps, such as uh, stapling, die cutting, folding, or gluing. And finally, since the first impression is often all it takes to decide to buy, we offer you a wide range of visual appearances from glossy or matte so that your packaging really stands out. Um, to underline Actiga's achievement with barrier coatings so far, we would like to share success stories from all around the globe. A customer of ours in the United States wanted to replace PE laminated board by using a barrier coating on the backside of SPS board stock. Especially for the production of folding boxes for fresh bakery products like donuts, but also dry pasta, the main requirement was a very pronounced grease and oil barrier, which we were able to realize with one of our grease barrier coatings. They also tested this coating on various other substrates, including craft cardboard for instance, and are fully convinced of the barrier properties. 
In Canada, a customer was seeking a water-based barrier coating as an alternative to offline wax-coated carton stock for the production of um, food boxes for pie crusts um, and pre-cooked foods. With our egg green barrier coating solutions, we were able to achieve a grease and oil resistance of kit 12 and also provide a recyclable alternative to wax. This was achieved by applying a grease barrier coating on the backside and a balanced system with water and grease barrier properties on the front side. An additional benefit for the customer was a significant commercial saving due to different material and less maintenance operator time by not using the wax machine. A Brazilian customer con contacted us when they purchased new equipment for barrier applications. Um, for the production of frozen food packaging, the requirement was to apply a barrier coating to the back of virgin fiber board with a minimum cop of less than 10 grams per square meter. The biggest challenge was to develop a very block resistant version at a film thickness of five gram per square meter dry, as the drying distance in their equipment is very short. And with one of our egg green barrier coatings, we could generate a cup value of four gram per square meter with at the same time, very fast drying and very high block resistance. And uh, yeah, we achieved an excellent result. And uh, today this coating is Actiga's best selling product in Brazil. In Europe, a customer was looking for a more sustainable alternative to PE laminated board for the production of fresh and uncut fruits and veggies. Um, originally, a cup value of less than 10 gram per square meter was required by the customer. Our internal test showed that this is overspecified for such an application. Using a combination of a primer and a water barrier coating on a fully coated full Holding box board, we were able to achieve a cup of 38 gram per square meter with an overall very low application volume of 3.5 gram per square meter dry. And we could keep the customer more than satisfied. Um, since we want to overcome the disadvantages properties of PE and um, offer environmentally friendly solutions instead, um, Water-based barrier coatings are certainly not 100% comparable with PE, but they don't necessarily have to be. Um, as our global success stories show, a green barrier coatings offer an equal substitute. We want to meet realistic expectations and not over-specify them. And all of the success stories have one thing in common. Together with the customer, we were able to implement customized and collaborative solutions for each end use requirement. And in all cases, a high level of customer involvement and a tailor-made egg green barrier coding solution were essential, which then together led to success. So in every project, it was worth the effort. As already mentioned in the introduction to this chapter, Actiga offers, besides conventional water-based barrier coatings, um, other highly specialized barrier technologies for converters, and especially with a focus on paper mills. Um, I would allow, like to give you an overview of the multifunctional aqueous TPE dispersions that inco incorporate our uh, patented Unico technology, which is a truly transformational and breakthrough chemistry. Unico Technology is an Actiga technology brand that is part of the Egg Green Barrier Coatings product line. Um, the novel, novel Unico Technology has recently been introduced to the market and changes the landscape of thermoplastic elastomer dispersions. Now, the TPE dispersions find use as barrier coatings or as pure heat sealing layers. Um, the TPE dispersions can clearly differentiate from other commercially available and market known dispersions. With the help of the unique Unico technology, polymers that are generally difficult to disperse can be incorporated in water without the use of dispersants or further additives. Um, in conventional dispersions, these additives often render products unsuitable for the direct food contact. With the patented Unico technology, it is possible to disperse high-tech TPEs in solidly water-based dispersions. No questionable additives are needed. And more importantly, 
The technology allows multiple polymers with the right range of properties to be combined in one single dispersion, and this results in an adjustable multifunctional barrier coating. The customizable structure of the dispersion coatings makes them suitable for a wide variety of coating applications and substrates. So, grammatures of um, the paper materials in current projects range from very thin paper with around 20 grams per square meter to thick cardboard with up to 400 grams per square meter. DPE dispersions can also be added to the pulp as a binder system in the paper making. And this way, it provides paper and boards with barrier properties already during the manufacturing process. Um, commonly, during paper production, additives like uh, surface glues, starches, or wet thickening uh, agents are added as a structural component. They help to achieve uh, certain properties like a smooth surface or increased tensile strength. Depending on the paper and the application, the amount of these additives can be as high as 20% sometimes even higher. And um, using TPE dispersions, similar properties can be realized with a significantly lower quantity. It also increases the compatibility to the functional TPE dispersion coding, which then leads to better barrier properties. Um, as mentioned before, the TPE dispersions combine different specific properties in one single product. First, they provide a barrier against substances like water, water vapor, as well as grease and oil. And second, it is possible to heat seal the pro uh, product, which is yeah, significant for cups, flow bags, or folded boxes, for instance. Additionally, they can increase the tensile strength of the paper packaging, which makes them more durable to tearing. And the coatings can also come with different tactile effects, such as uh, smooth, soft, or silky. The TPE dispersion coatings provide all mentioned properties at very low coat weights. This keeps the paper recyclable, and um, we can also collaborate with customers and institutes on this to further um, improve these properties. And each product is certified according to the European PTS method. Green barrier coatings by Unico Technology are suitable for um, yeah, a wide range of paper-based packaging, um, like dry food packaging, fast food packaging, or drinking cups. Um, the coatings can be used for both long and short shelf life filling goods. And um, we understand that every customer has different requirements, different processing parameters, or different substrates. So using this novel technology, it is possible and much more easily than in the past to customize towards the desired application. The versatility of the coding technology comes from the polymer compound, which is um, easily adjusted to your needs. And as mentioned before, the technology does not require emulsifiers, dispersants, or solvents that can migrate into the filling good. This means that the coatings are suitable for direct food contact. We make sure that all formulations comply with the respective FDA and European regulations. Okay, so after a lot of technical details, um, I would finally like to talk about the benefits uh, from Actiga's water-based barrier coatings for all of you. So what's in it for you when we're talking about uh, such important facts like sustainability, efficiency, performance, and regulatory compliance. As already demonstrated by four globally successful customer projects, Act Green Barrier Coatings can also provide you with the success stories. We want you to participate in the unique possibilities of our products and processes. So let's put, put an end to long delivery times, recycling fees, or availability issues. The use of barrier coatings eliminates the need to separate the various waste from PE to the board or paper to the rest, as well as the higher wear of production equipment. Let us provide real sustainable packaging to the consumers and the environment by offering solutions which are recyclable, therefore save costs, and even simplify your production processes. 
to write your own personal success story with Actigas at Green Barrier Coatings. We also need your support to recommend the best coding and process solutions. As mentioned earlier, barrier coatings are highly complex systems and not plug and play solutions ready for you off the shelf. There is not the one option, there is only the best. So most of our products are tailored to your specific needs and therefore represent an individual solution. Moreover, barrier is not just about a coating. It's much more about a combination of the best and most suitable products and processes. So the entire manufacturing process, uh, process is crucial from the paper production to the recycling. And um, we at Actiga therefore work in a very large network throughout the product lifecycle of the packaging. We work together with substrate and printing press manufacturers, with legal authorities, universities, and many others, and even support you in designing your packaging or simple tools to create a better barrier wall. The successful use of our water-based barrier coatings, of course, depends on the interaction of various factors, the end application, the design of the final packaging, and of course, the filling good, the substrate, the coating weight, or the printing process. And that's just a few to name here. And yeah, as I said, it's, it's a highly complex topic. And um, in a very specific product recommendation process, we record all necessary technical and regulatory properties per end application and perform dedicated tests to provide a customized solution to you. At Actiga, we believe in a very close collaboration with our customers. Uh, we want to provide custom solutions for custom applications because there is not a standard product recommendation barrier. Together with you, we match the ideal coding selections to your substrate and the desired application method, or advise you together with partners which parameters uh, would ideal for your um, specific application. And along with you, we develop our codings and the process, and even develop the best uh, test methods according to your needs and possibilities to ensure a consistently high quality during your processing procedure. And for Tiger, you are part of our barrier team. And our goal is to jointly and continuously optimize and further develop the technology of barrier coatings for packaging. So we are not standard. We provide tailor-made solutions from substrate to recycling. And um, yeah, to make sure that these promises um, become reality, we will ask you some questions about the intended end use, substrate, production processes, um, regulatory requirements, and um, a lot of other questions, as shown here in our Actiga Barrier Checklist. It looks quite complicated, but we will walk you through our checklist and all the questions. So in our Global Barrier team, we maintain a database of all projects and end-use requirements based on your individual information. And this way, we will be able to react even faster and more flexible to very specific requests and have the ideal requirement matrix um, at hand to develop new barrier solutions specifically for your needs. So just reach out to us or our Actiga sales representatives in your region and bring your barrier project um, to our attention and let us consult. But like I said, be prepared to bring us as much information as possible. All right. So to wrap up your key findings today, I would like to hand over to Lee again. Unfortunately, Lisa, Lee is having some connection challenges. The uh, joys of remote working right now. Uh, so I will take over with uh, closing out until we can get Lee on board. Um, I think, uh, as I explained in the beginning, um, one of the big takeaways from today is that sustainability is more than a trend. We've seen it as a sign of quality, as a sign of uh, general consumer expectations, but we're in that next level of maturity with sustainability where we're really seeing it as a fundamental requirement uh, in our industry. Um, with poly extruded board, um, great barrier properties are out there today, but these products generate waste.
that directly conflicts with the sustainability requirements that are coming from the largest brand owners in the world. Uh, Water-based coatings uh, present a, a real alternative and a growing alternative to polyboard and something that we see as uh, not just necessarily a trend, but here to stay and to continue growing uh, one solution at a time. Uh, these solutions are available to packaging converters, to printers, but even upstream at the mills as well. Um, they provide suitable barrier properties and meet that holistic product design requirement that uh, is uh, continue to be uh, pushed or pressured by brand owners. Um, Activa's water-based uh, barrier coatings uh, meet these requirements, particularly around sustainability, but also for efficacy, performance, and that always challenging regulatory compliance. Uh, and lastly, um, creating water-based barrier coating substitution it really requires a high degree of collaboration. And Lisa and I both touched on this, uh, but uh, really want to drill home that message that there's a high degree of collaboration required. There are no standard solutions out there. And ultimately, um, working in that collaborative partner-centric nature is the key to finding these solutions. Um, with that. Uh, ben, can you hear me? Yeah, he's back. I've made it back. And I apologize to everybody um, with terrible timing to lose your connection right uh, when I did. But uh, I am back. So let me wrap up our last slide or two here and then and, um, bring us into a question and answer period. Um, as you've heard, uh, there is a high need for collaboratory involvement between Actia and our customers and end users on, on building out the right solution for the right application. Um, so how do you how do we how do we move forward? How do we reach out? How do we gain Actiga's attention? And how do we create projects together? Um, as far as simple updates on our portfolio and what's happening in the world of barrier, uh, www.actiga.com is our website and easiest place uh, to to see what's going on on a regular basis. If you're into social media, we are regularly posting in LinkedIn, Twitter. Facebook and other social media sites. But the most important way to deliver a project and hand a project over to, to Actiga so we can collaborate together is through our project questionnaire. And in that project questionnaire, we go through some of the things that Lisa discussed, gaining insights into the specific substrates that you'd be using and the properties of those substrates, understanding your inks and your technology and your application methodology what kind of presses are using? What are the end use specifics uh, of uh, the needs of the end users uh, for the category? So the, the questionnaire is very complete and it's available through our sales team. Uh, if you have a, a, a key contact at Actiga, that person will be able to make the project questionnaire available. Um, information on our sustainability white paper and printed samples are also available on our website, www.actiga.com. If you do not have a direct sales link intact to you and you're interested in engaging into further conversation, you can add a question to the link here uh, on your screen. And through that, uh, through that link, we will be collecting all questions and responding to those on an individual basis. We've also collected other questions um, that we'd like to go through today. Um, our barrier team of barrier specialists has set up a specific email address for barrier inquiry. So you can also reach out to us at barrier.actiga.northamerica at altana.com. Again, that's barrier.actiga.northamerica at altana.com. And those inquiry requests will go straight into our barrier specialists to uh, for immediate response. What I'd like to do now is move into a question and answer period. And we've collected some questions here that I think might be relevant to uh, a large percentage of the audience. Um, let me start with a question for Lisa. Lisa, how much coding is required to create these barriers? And can I apply sufficient coding with an analog roller? Lisa, you're, you're on mute, I believe. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> now it should work. So um, the question, how much coding weight is required, uh, cannot be answered in general. So um, the barrier performance and the corresponding coding weight varies from coding to coding, and of course also depends uh, very much on the holdout of the substrate. But in principle, these products can be applied with a standard analog roller. So if necessary, um, also double coding um, or the application of a primer such as a, yeah, as a first down is ideal. And on average, we recommend a total volume between five and 15 gram per square meter wet. So for some end users, also high thick film, uh, film thicknesses are preferable. So for such cases, um, technologies such as curtain or rod coater are ideal. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, hey, Ben, um, question, are these coatings compliant with FDA regulations? Are they biodegradable, compostable, and what other regulatory concerns should we have in North America? Um, great question, Lee, and uh, a common one that we get, maybe little different flavors or varieties of it. Um, a lot of these coatings are designed with an intended use, an intended use is a really key concept when it comes to FDA, but with an intended use of food contact. And with those, you would expect all the required FDA or North American regulatory requirements to be met. Uh, when it comes to some of those other topics that you mentioned, things like compostability and biodegradability, um, it really it goes back to the intended use. Uh, regulatory is complex. And for those two particular topics, there isn't a single standard that has been adopted globally. So many, many of the coatings fit within uh, commercial or municipal uh, composting facilities, but uh, probably would need a little bit more detail to give a, a real thorough answer with that. Um, I would add that we, we've taken really a regulatory leadership approach in not just making sure things meet the regulations of today, but trying to look a little bit forward and understand what's coming and making sure that we're not producing something that's gonna no longer be valid a year from now. Um, a good example of, I think, regulatory leadership with uh, a number of our Act Green coding products would be the uh, uh, certification we have with the Cradle to Cradle Institute, where we're looking at uh, really the entire life cycle of the coding, and that includes that end of life where things like toxicology are taken into account that could really impact biodegradability. Great, Th thank you, Ben. Um, Lisa, another question, and this is about the hot and cold cup products. Um, does Actiga have a coating available for both hot and cold cup at this point in time? Yeah, I, I think I mentioned this already um, shortly during the webinar. So we started uh, development with a few selected parts partners and have already been able to progress um, with this technology very far. So today um, we have late stage developments available uh, for better testing. So the market for hot and cold cups um, requires very intensive cooperation um, between board suppliers, converters and cup farmers. There are many parties involved in these developments. Um, so what we have also experienced over time is that, um, yeah, individually adapted product solutions show the greatest possible success. So that's why we have focused so far um, on close partnerships. But in yeah Q Q4 of this year, um, Actiga's cup solutions are expected to made uh, to be made available to a broader customer base. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Um, another question, and I'll, I'll take this one. How does, how does the cost of AQ coated barrier products compare to that of extruded paper boards? And I, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's another one of these complex questions that requires a lot of analysis to come up to a detailed answer. Everything has its own unique uh, answer on, on that question. However, I would suggest that our barrier products are currently the fastest growing part of our North American portfolio. So we are reaching the market very, very successfully. We're finding applications um, that these costs are in line with market expectations. We feel very good about that. There is a correlation between the cost of the solution and the amount of coding utilized, right? The more demanding barrier applications are requiring, generally requiring higher coat weights. So when I say more demanding applications, I'm generally talking about 
uh, the aggressiveness uh, that we need to defend in the barrier, the length of time that we need to defend with that barrier, and the, the risks associated with failure. Obviously, a hot cup would have a completely different risk profile than other short-term barriers required maybe for a French fry scoop or a fold over clamshell. So all of those things come into play. I would say that we are uh, growing this market very rapidly and feel very good about that. I would suggest to most people out there that when it comes to more demanding applications, search for customers that are interested, highly interested in the value proposition of a more sustainable solution because as, as these products become more complex, they generally become a little bit more expensive and the balance uh, and the ability to compete on a per piece price versus polyethylene extruded um, solutions can be challenging. Please keep in mind that when it comes to these products, while we've been in the market for years with these products, the supply chains are still relatively in their infancy compared to the highly developed supply chains of paper mills and extruders and converters and, and forming machinery. So we feel very good about where we sit today. We recognize that the pressure from the market for more cost sustainable solutions will always be there. We recognize that we're embracing that challenge and intend to fully build out the capability to meet the market requirements as our, as we build out these technologies, as we build out these portfolios and we build out our manufacturing capabilities to match market requirements. So um, with that, uh, Lisa, Ben and the group, I'd suggest that we've reached our allotment of time. Um, again, we've got a, a list of additional questions and we have uh, questions that are being submitted. Uh, remember to uh, utilize the website. If you look to um, reach out to us, barrier.actiga.northamerica at altana.com and uh, contact your local sales rep if you have any specific questions or would rather go through that route. I thank everybody for, uh, for joining us and um, hope this was a valuable use of your time and uh, we appreciate your attention. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, Lisa. Have a good day. Thanks, Lee. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lisa.